Hey guys, it's Black Friday. You know what that means. We're going to the Blue River in Oklahoma. And one of the first things I always have to do before I get going is spill hot coffee in my crotch. And I've already done that. So it looks like it's going to be a really good day. Uh, we got a cool front coming. Uh, the wind's supposed to hit 25. So we don't know exactly. There's not much cover on the Blue River. Don't know how long this is going to last. We're going to get there as quick as we can. And... Try to catch some of those synthetic fish in the catch and release area. So stick around and let's go for a ride. One thing you definitely want to do is wait until you get to Pilot Point or Whitesboro to get gas. It's awfully cheap there right now. Cheapest I've ever seen of anywhere in North Texas. On the way up, you're in Oklahoma now. Or you got to go a little jog around the square in Medill. Stay on 377. And then you head on out of town. You know, 377, you're going to take that all the way past the turn into the park and go up north of the park and around on 7 at the curve. Here's the curve on 7. Once you head out a little ways on 7, you're going to turn into the grass parking lot on the left-hand side. Um, you'll see a lot of cars there sometimes on, on holiday weekends, and it's uh, this is a bike trail that you'll take to get all the way up to the north end of the uh, catch and release there's a couple of places you can drop in on your bike it's a pretty smooth trail um i'd say easy as a rating and like i said multiple drop-in spots where you can uh, pull off the trail drop down and, and leave your bike and it's very safe there this place is kind of like a, a, a fishing park for uh, kind of like a water park for fly fishermen and you can definitely uh, spend a lot of time in one spot. Some people never move, which I think is a mistake. On a, on a day like this, I had to do a lot of hit and run where I, if there weren't any fish biting in a, in a hole, I moved to the next hole until I found them. And that's where I ended up spending a lot of time is this one area where it seems like they were put all their marbles, all hit all the Easter eggs in one spot. These fish were mostly, um, as you'll see the fish later on, were mostly... Um, freshly stocked and there must have been hundreds if not thousands so being a freshly stocked fish is kind of difficult to deal with because they're still adjusting to their surroundings they'll be very skittish very shallow you can see them swimming around and then um, the bite is also kind of strange because they're trying to figure out what to eat they don't know for sure what they should or shouldn't eat and uh I tell you what, though, when you catch one of these never been caught synthetic fish for the first time they've been caught, it's a blast. You you can tell a difference because they jump, you know, two feet in the air three times, and they'll run uh, so far that they'll get ahead of your line, and it's really just kind of a kind of a blast. Actually, right now, it took me a while to really figure out what to, what to use on these guys, and of course, if uh, you want to know what I used fly wise. Just uh, check out the website and contact me, and I'll let you know. So what we're going to do here is just run through some uh, some more fish porn, which I know you guys enjoy. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to talk about some techniques for uh, making it a better day. This is not exactly the place you want to go if you're a beginner and go all alone or... Um, if you're bringing a beginner with you because first off you're not going to need a nine foot rod you're going to need something smaller and lighter i use a three weight it's a lefty cray rod i can't remember that finesse or something like that and uh it's really just about right for the size of fish and the, and the size of the fight they bring to you um, to really match up well i mean you'll get you'll get fish that'll bend your rod down into the handle which is not a bad problem um it's a good problem to have. In this particular case, I was sitting out on a log and just uh, suspended over the water. So, you know, if you want to have pretty good balance, you're going to do something crazy like that. But at the same time, one, you know, lower your profile so that the fish don't see you as well. And uh, always, always, always watch your back cast in a place like this because you'll end up in the trees if you don't. Even the best casters I've seen end up in the trees. So... Most experienced fly fishers, if, if you don't watch your back cast a la Lefty Cray, uh, you're going to get some tree time. A 
Keeping pressure on these fish is pretty important too because this is a barbless area and if you don't keep pressure on a hook and you have no barb on that hook, you're going to lose a fish. Watch this fly come right back at me. It's not that I didn't keep pressure on him, but that fish jumped and, and just threw that hook, threw that fly right back at me. So now that these fish have had a little experience of being caught, you can bet that they're going to become a lot more wise. You're going to have to get a lot closer to what they're after um, as far as fly selection. And uh, as, they, as their appetites normalize, I like to... Uh, these guys just didn't have a normal appetite. As their appetite normalizes, what will happen is you can uh, switch to like woolly boogers that are eights and tens and, and do quite well typically a black woolly is pretty pretty darn good fly but not with these guys on this day it was not i'll put a link in the youtube description to this story and from there you can go to www.texasflycaster.com and definitely get a uh, proprietary list of tips and the flies i used on this particular day which it took me a while to get to the right flies so it's pretty valuable information In this last segment, I wanted to show you just some casting from that same spot so that you can see how undisturbed I try to leave the water by keeping my rod tip pointed towards the fly line. This is just some tips here on, on how to handle water that really needs to be undisturbed. And so when you, when you strip the line in, your line is close to the water, you're creating as little disturbance as possible. There's really several ways to approach something like one of these pools at the Blue River, and one of them is just a, a high stick drift. You can high stick them. You can do a dead drift. You can do a swing where you let the fly swing, and it's down, down water from you, and it's just swinging in the current, <clears throat> and it'll find a place where the current's slower, and that would be where the fish would be. They go in and out of the current, just like anywhere else in any other freshwater river. And then you can also uh, um, fish up the, up the pool, too, upstream. So those are a lot of options. The main thing you've got to do is not disturb the water, like I was saying, and also make some clean cast. The better caster you are, the better day you're going to have on the Blue River because of how tight it is in places. And if you're a good caster, you're going to be able to cast in more different places. And if you uh, watch your back cast, you'll stay out of the trees. So there's a lot to be said for um, spending time in a place like this to hone your techniques and make you a better caster, better fly fisher, and ready for a more difficult situation wherever you may be going. Thanks for watching. Have a great holiday season. I'm sure there'll be more videos between now and the end of the year. Be sure and go to www.texasflycaster if you need more information about fly fishing in Texas and now in Oklahoma as well.